What's up, my peeps? It's Adrian. Now, week 14 in the NFC season has finally wrapped up, and I'm bringing you my power rankings, my top 10 teams. Now, let's let's get right to it. And we're going to go to number 10, and that's my Pittsburgh Steelers. They suffered a tough loss to the Oakland Raiders. Man, what a tough loss. They they played terrible. Big Ben got hurt, and just a lot of controversy. I just wish this team would get it together. They're on a three-game losing streak, and they can't seem to find any rhythm. It's always drama, drama, drama with them. Emotionally, they just wear me down. They need to get it together. They need to win at least two or three, two out of three of these next three games to finish the season in order, in my opinion, to qualify for the playoffs. If not, they could be on the outside looking in. Man, it's been tough for my Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll see what they can do. Can they capitalize? Now, I'm not so so optimistic as they play New England Patriots this Sunday at home. Now, we'll see because Tom Brady and Bill Belichick have had their number in recent years. So, we'll see how that plays out. But right now, I'm keeping them at 10. At number nine, I'm going to go to a team in their division, and that is the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I know they took a tough loss on the road to Kansas City, but Lamar Jackson has been straight balling. They have been leading the league in rushing since he's since he's took over their starting job. Now, he's 3-1 and one now. You know, he got knocked out towards the end, and they missed a pass interference call, but they play, they play as best they can. Lamar is showing he can play, and now he should remain the starter, which he will. And they, they are right now, as I say, the sixth seed. And they can jump up into AFC North. Now, we'll see how these next three games play out. But they are a dangerous team who could really give teams fits come these playoff times. You never count the Baltimore Ravens out with Terrell Suggs and that defense and C.J. Mosley. They are, Ravens are always one of those tough teams. And number eight, I have the Dallas Cowboys. Now, you all we all know my disdain for the Dallas Cowboys. But, man, they've been playing well on a five-game winning streak. After being three and five, and they they went in and they started when they won at Philadelphia. And now this past Sunday they took a tough fall overtime game to beat Philadelphia. Now, as you asked me, I was not impressed with their performance as they dominated Philly in yards, time of possession, just everything. The problem with the people overlook is Philadelphia had the their third, fourth stringers, fifth stringers, and guys who play special teams that you wouldn't expect to get a lot of playing time out there. And they took them overtime to win with Mari Cooper having over 200 yards and three touchdowns. And last but not least, Dak Prescott. I'm not impressed with him at all. I think he's an average to below average quarterback. He had two interceptions and a fumble in that game. Can he take them a long way? I don't think so, but he's finding some way to to win when it matters most. And you can't count them out right now. So they will win the NFC East, barring any failure meltdown. And now they got a tough game this weekend going to Indianapolis. Now, let's jump to my number 17, which beat them earlier in the season. Now, that's third game in the season, by the way. And that is the Seattle Seahawks. They have three things that work in the playoffs. A great coach, a great quarterback, and a great running game. Three-headed mo- monster in Davis, Penny, and Carson. And they got a young defense with a with an experienced leader in Bobby Wagner, who's, who is a stud out there. They got a tough win. I know it wasn't pretty against against the Minnesota Vikings on Monday Night Football. But, hey, it wasn't pretty, but Russell Wilson, when he counted, he got it He got it done. And I trust Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson more than I would trust Dak Prescott. So, hey, I think the Seattle Seahawks are here to make some noise in these playoffs, and they are my most dangerous wild card team this year in this year's playoffs. At number six, I have the New England Patriots. Now, we all know what happened to them. They were 14 seconds away from being in control of possibly having that number one seed. So had the Chiefs lost. Tom... But, hey, they gave up the Miami Miracle, as we've been calling it, on a 69 hooking yard ladder ladder touchdown in the final seconds when Kenyon Drake scored. Now, you don't usually see that from the New England Patriots scheme-wise. They were all off a couple times during that game. Now, I think they still will get the number two seed, and they will win a home playoff game and will play in the AFC Championship game, barring any setback, in my opinion, because when it comes down to it, I trust Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. I, I can't go against them. It's tough. Like, they're playing my boys this weekend, and I'm not and I'm not so confident because they've dominated us and had our numbers. But as long as you have Brady and Belichick and those brains, New England will always have some noise. And like like most people, we're hoping that they crack. And I do, too, because I'm not their biggest fan, but I have nothing but the most respect for them. At number five, I have the Chicago Bears. This defense had a dominating performance against the Los Angeles Rams. Four picks of safety, held the Rams at six points, and dominated them. But like I said, once again, my issue with the Chicago Bears is Mitchell Trubisky. Now, I know he missed the last two games with a shoulder injury. But, hey, 
I don't know how far you can get them. But if you if you asking me a, a warm weather team having to come to Chicago or any team at, being that sick come to Chicago and play Soldier Field, we know how cold it gets, windy in there, and it's a tough place to play. But that defense it can carry them a long way, and they got to pick the running game up as well. But Chicago is a team that is, is ascending. At number four, I have the Los Angeles Chargers. They are ten and three. They have been playing hard. Now they are in their last wild card spot, and they have a tough. A tough, huge playoff impl implication game against their division foe, the Kansas City Chiefs. Phillip Rivers has been a, has been a baller this year. Hopefully, they get Melvin Gordon back for this game. Stud receivers, defensively studs. They don't have to even even blitz. They got pressure from the front four and Joey Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. And Derwin James is a special safety. These Chargers are here to stay in their dark horse Super Bowl contender at number three. We have the Los Angeles Rams. Now, I know they took a loss on the road to the Chicago Bears. But, hey, like I'm saying, well, a lot of people expected that to be an upset pick as the Rams got out finessed. And my biggest problem, like I said, was just not doing what they need to do. And that was giving Ty Gurley the ball in the cold weather. And they didn't do that. And Jared Goff looked like the Jared Goff when Jeff Fisher got hands of him. We know that. We know people thought he was a bust. But the Rams will be all right. And I think they'll finish at 14-2 and two and possibly get a number, number one seed in the, in the NFC. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm not counting the Rams out, and they'll be all right. They just got to clean it up a little bit. I think they will this Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles, who will be sitting Carson Wentz, though, by the way. Rams will be okay. And number two, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. They showed a lot of mental mental fortitude and toughness getting that W against against a, a great Ravens defense, in my opinion. Patrick Mahomes got the game in overtime with a, with a nice touchdown inside the red zone on on the fourth down play to get the game to overtime, and they ended up winning 27-24. Wasn't their prettiest. Now, the Chiefs haven't looked as great since they lost Kareem Hunt, but I think they're finding ways. And if they get home field in Arrowhead, you can kiss that goodbye. I think they will be getting to the Super Bowl, and Andy Reid will have a chance to capture his first Super Bowl title that he's been chasing for years, and that would will, that will validate his coaching success. And you got to think Patrick Mahomes is still a baby. He's in his second year, but really he's a rookie in terms of starting. But this Kansas City Chiefs team, in my opinion, will be the number one seed in the AFC. And that brings me to the number one team still, and that is the New Orleans Saints. Now, I know people have been down on them a little bit after that Cowboys performance, but they were bound to come to a, come down a little bit as as they were balling before that. They won Dallas and played a tough Dallas team, and Drew Brees played his worst game of his career, like I said before. But, hey, this past week they went to Tampa got the W. Now, they don't, don't always play great in Tampa, but they got the W28-14, and it doesn't matter. And they are in the driver's seat right now to get the number one seed in the NFC. And if they get home field in that dome, down there in that super dome, you can kiss it goodbye. It, they're, they're partying down Bourbon Street, and they're getting to the Super Bowl. And a lot of people would love to see that. I, and with that being said, I thought Drew Brees was the MVP, but now um, I'm, I'm leaning toward Patrick Mahomes. Now I think he'll run away with it as he's leading the league in touchdown passes. But, man, those Saints are tough. And one more thing before I get out of here. Shout out to Michael Thomas for breaking the NFL record for most receptions in his first three years as he's passed OBJ and Jarvis Landry. That dude is a stud, and he deserves he deserves a lot of attention, a lot of credit that he doesn't deserve. But, hey, those are my power rank, rankings for week 14. I'll be back at you next week with, with week 15. I'm out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Send a comment below. Don't forget, watch, watch, watch. I'm out.